I calculated out winning bets on the Rust Bandit Wheel. My last video on this topic didn't do so well, I think in part due to Doomers not believing in my finding. Before we get started, let me be clear about some things. First, no, there are not patterns on the wheel. Second, yes, the wheel spin is random, there is a random number generator within the code. Three, the random number generator portion in the code isn't the end position of the wheel, it's the initial velocity of the wheel spin. The rotation functions in the Rust code, combined with the random initial velocity, result in biased ending position on the wheel. And later on, my findings last video showed mediocre growth over a lot of time. Using a new heuristic for bet amounts, the expected gains and consistency are absolutely bonkers. I'm talking about doubling your scrap in about 60 bets with way more consistency than before. Knowing the wheel bias, it is possible to make statistically favorable bets on the Rust Bandit wheel. You can watch my original video for more in-depth description of my methods, or look at these spreadsheets which show my findings and data. There are a lot of phony ideas out there about how to beat the Bandit wheel, but my findings are based on the underlying code. If you think this is bullshit, I implore you to listen to my findings and try to find any misstep I may have made. In this video, I'll recap my findings and address some of the feedback I got on my first post. I'll also show off a simple tool I made to leverage my findings in-game and show the results I got using this. You can use the timestamps on the bottom to look at the tool or to see the tool at work and to skip the math if you prefer. My findings are based on the actual Rust server code. These snippets show the code Rust uses to start the wheel spinning and to update the wheel each game tick. You can see here that there is a random number generator, but it only informs the initial velocity of the wheel to be some floating point value between 7 and 10. By plugging in random initial velocities between 7 and 10 to this update function, we can map this distribution and see that there is bias to the spin of the wheel. Essentially, the wheel is about twice as likely to land on one half of the wheel as the other half relative to the starting point of the spin. This is because at 7 velocity, the minimum, the wheel spins about 4.1 rotation, and each additional one unit of velocity on top of the minimum 7 equates to 180 degrees of additional rotation on the wheel. So, because the randomness on the spin is an extra 1.5 rotations, the wheel can end up here, here, or here again. So this area is essentially doubly as likely as this one. If you don't believe this part, you can run the code yourself and compare your findings to mine. Knowing the probabilities of landing on each section of the wheel from a given spot, we can map this probability distribution onto the wheel at each section and find out how likely each color is to roll from a given spot. We can then compare these values to the payouts and get the expected value of betting on each color from a given spot. This results in this chart, showing that there are statistically favorable bets to make from given starting positions. Betting using this chart over sufficient time, you will gain scrap. This chart doesn't mean that the wheel will end up on the given color, just that the expected value of betting on that color is greater than 1. Essentially, if the chart recommends a blue bet with a 6 to 1 payout, you have a greater than 1 in 6 chance to hit blue. For a 10 to 1 payout, you have a greater than 1 in 10 chance to hit. And for the 21 to 1 payout, you have a greater than 1 in 21 chance to hit. So how much should you bet? In my previous video, I talked about betting a flat 1% and put in the comments that using the Kelly Criteria betting system might be more efficient. However, doing a calculation before each spin seemed tedious, and so I didn't want to use it. I have since run the simulations with this Kelly Criteria method, and the gains are absolutely insane. This is the data I showed in the last video, betting flat percentages of your current scrap. I commented on how to gain scrap you need to make small bets over time and often still ending up down on scrap. Using the Kelly criterion and the percentages I calculated before, these numbers blow up. <laughs> you 10 times your scrap growth over 200 bets. Using the Kelly formula is tedious to do with each bet. In order to make the experience easier, I started a simple proof of concept web app. I'm not a front-end developer, but it gets the job done. Here's a quick sample of how to use the tool. So in-game, we see that the selected slot is this green one. We go into the tool, we insert our total current scrap, which is 1830, and then we spin the wheel to match what we see in-game with this green slice up, and we verify that the green one is the one selected. We calculate the bet, and it tells us to bet 11 on red. So when we go back in-game, get 11, put it on red. And when the wheel spins, it ends up on this slice, the green three to the right of the 20. So we go in the app, we spin it to green, 
we calculate the bet again. From this slice, it tells us that there is no valid bet, so it tells us to bet zero on none. See also that our scrap went down. After the next spin, it's on the one just to the right of the 20, so we spin it to that cycle. Calculate again, and it tells us to put 43 on blue. We go in the game, put 43 on blue. Wait for the spin, and it lands. So we get paid out in the game. And when we go back into the app, update to get our next bet, we'll see that our current scrap up top matches what we have in game, the 2034. So there you have it. Using this tool in the Kelly criterion, you should have way more consistent results and you should see exponential growth in your scrap stack. This is still relative to your starting capital though, so unless you have a decent amount of scrap to start with, this won't be faster at getting you scrap than just breaking barrels. I'll link the tool, my data, and my previous video in the description below. I hope this video serves to convert more doubters to believers, and that this helps you get some scrap. If you're still a doomer, leave your concerns or doubts in the comments.